Yeah. You remember uh, two days ago when it was sunny and yeah. breezy? Yeah. Two literal days ago? Yeah. It, it wasn't sunny and breezy. It was freakishly warm and Wizard of Oz windy out there. So yeah, it was warm and it was breezy, but those words have multiple meanings. And now, two days later, yeah. snowing. Because that's Pittsburgh. This is Kenzie McElfresh for Search No Further, uh, here to give you a quick little modification guide for the Busby Blast Zooka Extreme, otherwise known as the XBZ. Drink it in. It's the bigger brother to the community darling, the Panther. Uh, every nerfer should own about five or six of these. Five or six? Five or six. <laughs> Terrifying <laughs> as well. The Blast Zooka normally fires these large missile things. It uh, doesn't do it very well, but in a little bit you'll see how Blasuka can fire a dart extremely well, and we'll put it through a little batch of tests and introduce you to our ballistic pendulum. Tools we'll be using is a screwdriver, pipe cutters. They're very dirty and grimy with work of ages. I've got black industrial grade duct tape that I bought by the pound. How do you buy duct tape by the, by the pound? That is a trade secret involving the Goodwill outlet stores. This small utility knife and this large hunting dagger. <laughs> Around here we call these Brock Samsons. So our first step will be removing all of the screws from the shell. Removing screws here, 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 here. here. So we just removed all the screws, and there's only a few things that are holding this shell together. One is this little thing around the button, the firing button, which is a little piece of plastic. And there's this cone. In other blasukas I've seen, this was glued in place, but for some reason it just comes off like magic on this one. So once you've removed all the screws and the offending plastic bits that hold it together, the clamshell splits. You throw that away. You literally just throw it away. We just throw it. It's down on the ground. It's down on the ground. It's superfluous now. You could shoot it just like this if you wanted. There's no reason to have that shell there at all. It even kind of snugs up like a nice little rifle-y type stock arrangement. So the first thing that I would want to do, regardless of whether you're going to rebarrel this to fire darts or whether you want to continue firing the missiles, is add some kind of a stop so that this plunger, this pump, doesn't just pop out on you. And I'm going to do that in probably the worst possible way by taking something pointy, cramming it into the side of the pipe until I have worked a little hole. I caution you, this is an Appalachian method and fraught with danger. And then once I have a little hole started, hopefully I will be able to convince this screw it wants to live in this hole. This is not going to work. This is going to be horribly, wickedly embarrassing. Look at that. I think we're going to have to use Brock Samson. About to run home to my drill press, but that just... I want to do as much of this with hand tools that somebody would have in a dorm as I can. If I can make something that somebody can replicate with next to no tools, that makes me a happy nerfer. But it's making me look like an idiot right now, and that's exciting. I think it's working. It's working. Alright. Make sure there's no debris in your pump tube. I've now screwed it in too far to get the pump head back. You just run this little screw in here so that when the pump head comes back, it catches. So you can no longer pull the pump out by accident. Okay, so the second step is only for people who want to rebarrel uh, re this to shoot smaller darts. So we take our pipe cutters, snug those puppies down. I want to cut right about a half an inch above the white thing. Spin these puppies, 
tighten it down a little more, give it a couple more spins. Tighten it down a little more, give it a couple more spins. Normally when you're cutting up something like this off, you want to pump the blaster up first to make sure that uh, no debris got in the barrel, but with the pipe cutters, there's no debris. Throw that on the floor, because the floor is not mine. Thanks. So now, we've got a little stub at the end of the tank, which would almost, but not quite fit, a half-inch Schedule 40 PVC coupler. My solution to that is take a little bit of duct tape, wrap it around the end here. Try to keep your passes as nice and neat as you can because the smoother this surface is, the better it will seal with the coupler and the more airtight it will be. Give it a little test fit. Oh, that's just about right. Needs a little bit taken off. You want to put this on so that it requires Sasquatch strength. The Sasquatch strength will ensure that it does not come back off and that it is on there in a nice and straight fashion. Oh. Alright, and that's what you're left with. You have your coupler on your Blasuka. I couldn't leave my house without being filled with this terror that a flying pine tree or a uh, airborne sheep was going to come careening out of the sky and take me out. I hid inside my warm house, terrified. So yeah, it was warm and it was breezy, but those words have multiple meanings. Alright, we're, we're shooting. We're shooting. We're live. We're All right. Live. So that's pretty much it. We're done. Now it's just a matter of taking whatever your favorite barrel solution is and plugging it on this puppy. I've got a hopper here. You could use a single barrel. Plop it in there like that. You take just a piece of Schedule 40, throw a tagger dart in there. Pump the living daylights out of it. Oh, smoke came out of that. Oh yeah, smoke comes out. I have this hopper here. We'll load some elite darts in there. Typically, elite darts don't feed through hoppers unless you have something with a little bit of nuggetry behind them. What do you mean, nuggetry? Power. Uh, Brawn. Fortitude. Heart. Oh. Alright, and so. Good. I hit the God, window with that. Don't that hit the awful. window with that, I, man. I'll do my best not to do that in the future. Hit the green thing. Didn't even register on the video camera, it was so fast. Alright, uh, going to introduce Search No Further's high-tech ballistic pendulum. We're going to be shooting the ballistic pendulum and then marking or measuring the uh, distance that it traveled to show how much kinetic energy was impacted. Here at Search No Further, we are too poor to buy a chronograph and measure feet per second and uh, probably isn't going to change anytime soon. This is the ballistic pendulum. It is a, a nice absorbent fabric. We will only use a full roll when mm -hmm. we do these tests so you'll know that it's the exact same kinetic energy being transferred every time. And then we got this measuring mat thing. This uh, and it's all, It has measurements on it. We've set the ballistic pendulum at 8 inches. Our goal for shooting is going to be from the zero mark. We got the ballistic pendulum centered up there in the mat pretty well. Okay, for our first shot, we moved the ballistic pendulum almost exactly one inch. From the eight to the nine. That's pretty good. I'm resetting the rig. Okay, and that measured out at just around three quarters of an inch. I feel like you might have hit that one a little lower, too. I hit them both in almost the identical Oh, wow. Locations. Look at those divots. That's, that's precision. Look okay. at those divots. That is divots. All right, one more. And that one barely moved at all. For some reason, it only got a half an inch. Well, you hit it up. I hit that one a little higher. A little high, yeah. There's a there's a lot more rocking action. Yeah. Than 
We're going to do one more shot with a single barrel so that we don't have any of the dead space in the hopper to deal with and see if we can't move the ballistic pendulum just a little bit more. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Okay, so that with the single barrel really only moved it about the same as I got from when the, full, the hopper was full and there was no dead space at play. So we learned that. Okay, I don't feel like this test will be complete until we perforate a little bit of cardboard. I could only find one Stefan Dart glue dome that I made years ago. It's in awful condition, but I think for this test it will probably do just fine. Throw that in the hopper. And we are going to be going through this piece of cardboard. cardboard. And there she is. One piece of perforated cardboard. That's that's real deal cardboard too. That's, that's real deal cardboard. That's spaghetti sauce cardboard yeah, right there. Yeah. I mean like that that cardboard was built to hold six canisters of spaghetti sauce. Mighty canisters of spaghetti sauce. Fun discovery. Shoots pretty good. So it modifies to shoot an Elite Dart or a Stefan Dart, and it can still shoot the, its original ammo. It slices. It dices. It's only $10 at Walmart. You think that's your dart? So in review of what we've done, uh, we brought the Blasuka in. We opened up its clamshell. Uh, we uh, played with her insides. Uh, modified a few things and made one cut and uh, added the barrel. Added the barrel. In conclusion, buy a Busby Extreme Blast Zuka. Buy four of them. They're ten dollars. There is not a cheaper way to make an NIC level primary blaster than going out, buying a Blast Zuka, cutting one piece of it off, taping some crap on. It blows my mind. It, uh, it's just a ready-to-go air gun. I think this is a blaster that everybody needs. I think that, you know, folks have just barely started to scratch the surface on what this puppy can do. I mean, it, it's, from a engineering standpoint, you know, there, there's just something wonderful about the dimensions of this pump. Having your pilot valve right here, right at the end of the tank, no dead space, just kerplum. For a new modder, this would be a great stepping stone. It used to be people would say, oh, modify a night finder because it's an easy thing to learn on. At this point, I say, go buy a Blasuka and learn on it because at the end, you won't have a crappy night finder. I'd like to thank you folks for watching. Uh, brings us to the end of this segment of Search No Further. Uh, this is Kenzie McElfresh, signing off. Signing off. Boy, you